Greetings to all who gather for our service here at Ascension this morning, both online and in person. And we thank those that are in person for remaining masked for the service. We're grateful for your care for others. We also want to call your attention to our Connect cards in each pew. If there's some information you would like to share with us or if you're visiting with us, um, please uh, fill one of those out and put it in the offering plates. Let us rise for the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like we gaze upon the limits and ceases, and faces away from injustice and oppression, we explore the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and self, selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Any children that would like to come forward this morning? We'll continue with the reading of the first lesson. A reading from Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me and I knew. Then he showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, let us destroy the tree and its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the hearts and the minds, let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. The psalm will be read responsively. Save me, O God, by my name. In your might, defend my cause. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. A reading from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruit, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you where do they come from? Do they not come from your craving that are at war within you? You want something and you do not have it. So you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflict. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive. Because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down and called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it into his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord God, our strong rock and our eternal life. Amen. Once I was visiting an elderly woman in a care facility, and during our conversation, she said to me, Pastor, it seems the older I get, the more I become like a child again. The older I get, the more I become like a child again. More than once I have heard someone tell me that my parents took care of me when I was born and when I was a child growing up, now it is my turn to take care of them. In our society, so much overlaps when it comes to children and older adults. And often, we care for both small children and the elderly in similar ways. But in Jesus' day, children lived on the peripheral of society, not really seen or paid much attention to. I recall the painful and harsh words of some adults when I was growing up that children should be seen and not heard. As we look to the reestablishment of our greeter ministry here at Ascension, I remember little Isabella. One Sunday morning, when I went up front to make the announcements, Isabella tapped the pew seat beside her. And she said in a very loud and excited voice, you can sit here. You can sit here, little Isabella told me. Oh, that we had the same excitement and enthusiasm when welcoming others, especially in church. Jesus is being very straightforward in our gospel text. It is a short text, and it sounds very simple, doesn't it? To welcome others in his name. The word whoever appears a dozen times in the broader text 
that surrounds the short reading that we have in Mark's Gospel. Whoever, whoever welcomes such a child in my name welcomes me. Whoever, when we welcome others in the name of Jesus, we do so with the love and compassion of our own Lord and Savior. Whoever, and whenever, whenever others welcome us, they do likewise. I know it's not been easy being the church during the pandemic. And coming for worship and gathering together. Still others, for one reason or another, have not come back yet. And we respect their decisions. But for us who are able to be here, masked and distanced as we are, we are welcoming others. And our welcoming is still so very important. So sad are the times people recall attending a church, and maybe you've experienced it yourself or heard it from others, when no one, no one spoke to them, much less welcomed them. It is so sad to hear these words that we can call ourselves Christ's church in the world and yet choose not to speak and welcome others. It is so reassuring that our greeting, greeter ministry is looking to get back together and have their meeting today on strategizing and looking at who will serve in that ministry. It is so very important. It all seems so simple, doesn't it? To welcome others as we would welcome a small child. Now, the disciples and others were actually looking at welcoming the Messiah as being a most powerful person in society. One who dictated and took control. But Jesus presents a different model. As the Messiah, the one who comes to be among us, Jesus looks at welcoming the least of these, a small child, as an example of how we are to welcome others also. He takes a small child and teaches, teaches that we too should be servants of others as he is servant of all. So as we move forward, during this day and in our life, let us recall this action that Jesus does that is so simple and before us. And let us remember that welcoming others in the name of Christ is what we should be about. Thanks be to God. Amen.
we have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under conscious power. He was crucified and died for the third day the fifth day he rose again and ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Please kneel as you are able. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us overcome our divisions that we are encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth. Awaken in us a new desire to care for this world and empower us to support agencies, organizations, and individual efforts to heal our environment. We pray especially for all affected by ongoing wildfires in the Western United States, for continued relief efforts following earthquakes in Haiti and Mexico, for relief efforts following Hurricane Ida, Tropical Storm Nicholas, and other major storms, and for the work of Lutheran Disaster Response. Lord, in your mercy, God of cooperation, we pray for nations of the world embroiled in conflict, especially for the Afghan people and all living there during this time of political turmoil and conflict. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children who cannot find safety in their homes or country. Lord, in your mercy, God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illnesses, especially Pam, Ron, Hazel, Butch, Joe, Paul, Pastor Jack and Elsa, Paige, Diana, Lucy, Caroline, Becky, Betsy, Donald, and those we name in silence. Help them find appropriate care, bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst. As they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy. God of harmony, we pray for Jocelyn and Kyle, who were united in marriage here yesterday. We also pray for our Jewish siblings who have recently observed the holy day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. Lord, in your mercy. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and pray for all who grieve today, especially Carol, Shine your grace on all your saints, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you.
We will now receive our offerings um, for the mission of the church, including those in need. Um, offering plates will remain on the stands at the end of all the aisles um, at the doors. Thank you for your support of Ascension and the wider church and its ministries. Let us pray. Jesus, God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. 
And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our bread of life, our table, our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life. You fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to them saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us, his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make us the body of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. All who hunger and thirst come, the table is ready.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Maybe you seated. Thank you, are. want to make sure everybody knows that next Sunday is the Women of the ELCA Sunday. Uh, we'll be recognizing uh, women of faith um, and those awards recognition given at that service. We will also install our new Women of the ELCA officers. Um, please um, be aware of the two circles that are meeting uh, on a regular basis and please feel free to join them. Next Sunday will be a unified worship service at 10 a.m. We will continue that for several weeks, um, and we are looking to reassess um, the status of the pandemic, um, hopefully, um, and make some changes on Reformation Sunday, which is also going to be our rally day, um, kicking off Sunday school. We've been quite delayed with that, so we really are praying and hoping that we can be able to offer instructional classes as well. Uh, please note the other announcements that are there and please schedule accordingly. There will be a greeter meeting if you want to join us between services today. And also if you know someone that is of confirmation age, please let um, Kirsten Schooler know. She's here now and um, we are welcoming students that are in the middle school age bracket um, to join us so please know that this is also an outreach from the communicate from the congregation into the community so we would invite any children of that age that would like to join us please stand for the blessing people of God you are Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.
Go in peace, the living word dwells in you.